This was the second prompt for November this year, and the prompt word was four-sided. These first numerical ones, the three-sided, four-sided, five-sided. These ones are finding quite challenging to actually get into. Like it would be easy to jump in and do, you know, some actual geometric stuff, some geometric shapes, but I do want to abstract it a little bit and make sure that I'm working on something that's a little bit bigger, part of maybe a larger project and something that allows me to explore things a little bit further, take things a bit further. And it's also a good excuse for me to really understand what is useful or missing in my toolkit because I'm using these nodes pretty heavily. So my idea was essentially a room, four-sided, and inside the room there were these pneumatic tubes, which is how messages and things like that used to get sent around, especially large public buildings. So a bunch of pipes in a room and a door ahead with a corridor and I wanted to kind of get that cell fracture explosion that you saw at the beginning. So I made the room and the floor is fairly simple. It's just a grid with offset rows, which I've instanced boards onto. A lot of people told me the correct method for getting meshes to instances, which is actually really easy. You just instance your mesh on a one point line and that will turn it into an instance. And then you can do this a bunch of time, join them together and use pick instances as you would normally wish to. So that's the node that I ended up adding to the toolkit, the mesh to instances node. Basically just does that with a few extra options for you. Now I wasn't really sure how to get some of the other parts working correctly. I wanted to do this bend on the floor where all of the floorboards kind of move around and their locations randomize, but they're also bending. So I had to do a certain amount of attribute capture just to make sure that I was transferring the positions I wanted to move so I would not move individual vertices randomly, I would move individual boards randomly because I needed that to happen after the bend because I wanted the bend to be consistent with the original positions. In the final animation this is somewhat <laughs> unnecessary because you don't really see it too much but as a workflow and something for me to get my head around how to do I think it was time well spent. Now I also wanted to get this sort of cell fracture so I did build out the walls in a more thorough way so that when things blew up it looked a bit better but again this was you know not necessarily going to work out as a good time investment for the, for the camera because you don't necessarily see all of these studs in the walls when it blows up you do see the ones in the corridor but you don't necessarily need them on the rest of the room it was fairly easy to do though so it wasn't like it wasn't a big problem that i had spent the time doing that then i wanted to get this cell fracture on the wall so that the plaster looked like it was all blowing up i could have probably done a little bit better with the materials getting it just painted on the front but i, I used spur chalk here to create my plaster with the extrusions and i did this 100 percent procedurally no manual extrusions or primitives or anything and then used the populate mesh and foreign ion mesh nodes which are part of the scipy module and that allowed me to get the individual sections of the Voronoi. Just did a little bit of maths as well because I, I included the ceiling so I did a little bit of math to make sure that I had my origins centered on all of the pieces and that the material was also different from the faces on the walls to the faces on the ceiling. Now after I got all of the sections for the floor done and the wall I started animating with some nodes to get the explosion to kind of line up together so I was using a bit of fall off using some of my fall off nodes and also just map range and the location from the empty. Next I needed to make a little door and rotate it so there's just a few boxes scaled and positioned and then I used an empty actually I was trying to get my corner procedurally positioned but ultimately positioning an empty and typing in specific numbers it just seemed ultimately it was going to be both easier and less manual to actually hand position the empty. So I did that for my rotation center and that allowed me to get a good hinge position. And then I'm just animating the Z rotation on that. Now to get the pneumatic tubes in the room, this is a fun little process. Essentially I made a box on which to scatter points. And then I did an attribute transfer of the position of the points. And I randomized the source position by a certain distance. And this basically meant that I could find the position of another point relative to to a specific point because of the indices right so by doing this i was able to with a selection mask take one end of my mesh line which i'd instance on one point and connect it to another point somewhat at random i increased the likelihood that ones on the ceiling would attach to the floor and ones on the walls would also attach to each other i also wanted to make sure there was a kind of clear corridor that somebody could walk through to make sure the camera had easy access through so for that i just used the raycast now it would have been so much more useful if we'd had the world modifier as a node because i really needed to 
be able to remove doubles when I snapped the position. So that's how I got my stepped position on the pipes to make them all look like they were following axes. But ultimately it did mean that I had a load of points that were in singular position. So when I subdivided, it didn't give me clean corners. So in the end, what I had to do was I made my pipes in a separate object and then brought them in and turned them into pipes so that I was able to use the weld modifier in that process. A lot of the rest of this is just making sure that all of my things are stuck together in the right order. But we also had a little bit of an aside on the stream. Somebody wanted to know what was some good beginner, like a beginner process to go through. And of course, donut is actually quite a good one. So in this case, we went through making a donut using the curve to mesh node with a couple of circles and then distributing points on the top with point distribute, but then going points to volume and volume to mesh to generate the icing. We then added eyes, of course, googly eyes, and really the whole thing just started going south a little bit, but it was a good learning experience. I think people actually got a lot out of it, even though it was a, a bit of an odd one. We made it so that the eyes would look at the camera when the camera got close to them. A fun little bit of maths and a few rotate oilers. After we finished the donut exercise, we ended up going back to the room just for some final polishing, chucking on a couple of shaders, putting in some lights and finishing off the animation. Cannot recommend enough to use Ian Hubert's Shakeify add-on. It makes animating cameras so much easier. I literally had four keyframes and I just applied the Shakeify add-on and it gave me all of the really natural wobble of a handheld camera. So it really kind of elevated the impression of the video. So if you are struggling with these prompts, maybe just think a little bit broader. I know it's very easy to think of four-sided, oh, it's a square, but you can take this wherever you want to go. That's kind of part of the purpose of having these wide open prompts is it encourages a little bit more creativity, encourages a little bit more thinking outside the box. And I'd recommend that you take advantage of that because this month can offer a huge amount of fun to just test out ideas and see the kinds of stuff that you can come up with and push your skill level into areas that maybe are less efficient. You know, absolutely would not use proceduralism for all of these things, but forcing it to go through the process really helps you see what is possible and pick up some skills which may help you down the line. That's it for this one. Hope you've enjoyed and I will see you for prompt number three. Thank you.